Damn it. Hey everybody, welcome back. As always, I'm Chris. If you're new to the channel, well, you're in for a treat. We're gonna start a new uh, new project here with the chopper, uh, with our new shovel head. So stay tuned, let me know what y'all think. Uh, so what are we doing today? Uh, that's right, we're going to chop off our tail. So we're gonna put the hard tail on, which is right there. Um, directions say two inches forward of the center of the rear trans mount so i already have it marked on both sides and then on the top we just cut through here and we cut through here so and then we'll grind all this smooth and make it look all nice and pretty uh once we get that done then we can fit our tail on so um i checked it like three times on our measurements if it's not straight well, uh, we'll fix it like always. So if you've seen other videos on here, uh, we are very much able to fix stuff that we fuck up. So <laughs> trying to get to the point that we don't do that anymore, but you know, stuff happens. So, uh, but that's what we're gonna do today is get this guy tacked on. So still waiting on some parts to fit up the rear wheel and stuff. So at least we can get the tail section tacked on get everything measured make sure it's centered that's the biggest thing is making sure it's centered left and right on the bike uh, and then we'll adjust the bottom those two rails down here the length of them and that'll get us to make sure we're centered uh on the bike and we're right everything's running straight and parallel so yeah let's get to it All right, so got it cut off. Uh, these uprights, I mean, it's pretty thick steel, but definitely gave the saws all some issues. Uh, it was fine, it just took a little longer and it was, wasn't too happy. So uh, I use the saws all because it doesn't throw shit all over the place. Uh, I usually, use, I used to use angle grinders um, because you can kind of square it up and run it through, but it makes a hell of a mess. So I've been trying to use the saws all more. Uh, and my bandsaw but this is where we're at so I deburred these a little bit so um, probably gonna have to cut this thing back further I cut it just at the end because I didn't know um, if it attaches to the new one or not which probably not but anyway uh, we got a lot of cleanup to do we gotta get these cleaned off we gotta shape this a little bit um, and get it cleaned up and then uh, we can kind of tack everything together. I gotta put a chamfer on these. But until then, let's see if we can even get the tail section on. Just to kind of see where we're at. Yeah, looks like we're gonna pull. Just one of these rails out a little bit, so... But, I'm gonna go ahead and take this down, uh, grind everything down, get it ready to go. That way we can go ahead and get that thing tacked on. Alright guys, so... Uh, kind of glad I didn't record actually putting the hardtail on, because... This was a pain in the ass. Um, so... We got everything cut off. I got it all ground down. Um, pretty nice. Still got to do a little refining here, which we will do later. Um, take a file in here and whatnot. But anyway, the uh, it's all ground down. We got our hardtail tacked on. So our stock frame rails here were about a 16th too close. Um, so that was a lot of fun. 
Uh, I was trying to, I was fighting this thing. It was, it was really kicking my ass. And then finally I took the, uh, well, I put my, my floor jack on one side and then pr jacked it up and then used a pry bar to pry this. And it was still fighting me. So the slug, there's a slug in here. It's attached. Um, I took and tape put a hard chamfer on it so kind of like a pinpoint almost but I knocked this edge off the top edge pretty hard so they could kind of sloop in um, once I finally did that then it went right in ish I had to beat the crap out of it to get it in there so got a little little bit of issues there but we'll fix that later so there we go we are Good to go so far. So hardtail is on. Everything lines up. Um, I put a straight edge on the backbone. It ran it all the way. I ran it down from the neck down to this post. I used this little block and centered it. I had a rod that I put in here. Centered it all the way back and then measured uh, side to side uh, and centered it. So it's within like a thirty second. So it should be pretty good. Um, yeah, next thing is fully weld it. So um, we got to fully weld the bottoms and then the tops. So I'll do that probably tomorrow and we'll get back on this thing. So the rear axle and stuff is supposed to be here later this week. So we'll we'll get going on that. Um, trying to get going a little bit on this because I want to get it done. Uh, there's a show and may here um towards the end of may would like to have this bike going I'd like to take to it so uh mainly because there's a bunch of they're doing a uh invited biker thing or invited builder thing and i want to take it down there and see how we do so uh we're not one of the invited builders but i'd like to take mine down and see how it compares so but that's the plan um next thing so after we get everything welded then we can do our start mocking up our rear um we'll get all this welded i'll put the motor back in i want to put this the two into one um if you all saw previously on the channel i had this on the other shovel that we had built so i want to put that on here because i think it'll look better on this bike than it did on the uh swing arm bike um we'll see uh, if it does, it does. We'll run it. If not, then so be it. Uh, there's a few people that are really interested in that pipe, so I think I might make a few of them if we get time. Um, I gotta get some supplies and whatnot and then make a jig so we can recreate it. Um, but yeah, we'll see. That's later stuff. But anyway, that's, uh, that's kind of where we're at. So tomorrow I'll get this thing all finished welded and we'll be good to go on the hardtail. Um, oh, so grinding all that metal off, this is what all is all metal dust. Uh, I had swept the floor previously to doing all this. I clean, I cleaned, rearranged, cleaned up the shop yesterday. Uh, I need it, so it's better, but we're still trying to make shit work so that was a lot because on here these big lugs had a lot of metal on them these parts up here had a lot of metal so these ears up here uh, basically i grounded down until um i ground almost ground through that tube that tube that meets up because they essentially squished it and just stuck it on tat and welded it um and then i took a cold chisel and popped it off and peeled it so that i didn't gouge out this too um it turned out pretty good so pretty happy with it so but that's going to do it for now um or at least for tonight tomorrow we'll weld this thing back up get the motor and stuff back in and see where we go stay tuned all right so back on the frame uh we're going to finish weld this thing up tonight and good thing is all our axle parts came in for our rear wheel Bad news is we have to modify stuff in order to get it to work. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. So this is our spacer. 
Um, this goes in. This goes in the back side of your juice drum, and it has a spacer built into it. This part, I'll sit sit down here. This part here is the spacer that goes through your frame. All right, so it has flats on it. Those flats are supposed to go through the axle plate, and then this nut goes on this back side, and then this part goes through the stay. And you all this entire part stays on the bike. Problem is, this is too big for our axle plates. All right, these axle plates are intended for a three quarter inch axle, and this thing is 15 sixteenths. So, uh, I was talk, talking it out, trying to figure out what would be the best plan of action here. Um, also, our axle has the same square on it on the head, so we'd have to modify that too. So, I had a few options. I uh, thought about machining the flats, and um, there's 3 16 of an inch that needs to come off, or these need to be opened up. And after talking about it and thinking about it, I think opening the axle plates is going to be our better option uh, because then we can just get all stock parts for the juice drum and we want the machine thing. We can always, for these uh, axle plates, we can always make some spacers or something in there if we need to. So uh, I think that's gonna be our best bet. Uh, the other one was to order cast pieces that actually go with this, but I don't even know if they would line up with the, the legs anyway. So we're gonna try this. Uh, the biggest thing is going to be laying it out to make sure I get everything centered and get it laid out, mark it, mark it all out, and then I'll take the burr in there and hog it out, and then we'll file it to final fit, and then uh, put it all together. So uh, we still need to weld the frame or the hardtail on, so we'll probably do that. Um, but I think. I'm going to do this first, um, just in case we screw this up and for whatever reason we need to take the hardtail off, uh, it'd be better because it's only tacked on right now. So we'll get this uh, laid out and then we'll hog it out and see if we can hopefully get our juice drum and star wheel to or star hub to work on this um, configuration. So. You know, it is a chopper. We are doing an amalgamation of all kinds of different generations of parts uh, from the early 60s up through this in 80 bike. So um, just like hot rodding, you have to make stuff work. So uh, if it was easy, everybody would do it. But there are a lot of people who build bikes, so it can't be too hard, right? <laughs> so uh, we'll get this laid out and then um, we'll start hogging at it and get it done. So, ground these out, um, use my burner to hog a little bit out. I didn't really need to take a lot, but put this little template on here, lined it up. Um, it got me pretty close, um, scribed marks, and then I took a ruler and also put center line on these holes, um, this hole and this tab on the back. Took my, cal or my um, dial calipers, uh, scribe, put the ruler on here and then scribed half. Scribed it down here and then scribed it up here and then um, used my burr and then file fit. So now we have a really nice piece that slides back and forth. All right, it's got a little bit of room in there so it can move also for when we powder coat this thing or paint it or whatever we're gonna do. Uh, need to work on this little radius just a little bit just to fit it so it'll fit in there But we might just leave it the way it is because I don't know if it'll need to go in there But the other side is just as good All right So the axle fits in over there It's all snug Might need to file that one just a bit more But yeah, it'll get us our wheel in at least So up 
let's get our wheel in. So we got juice drum. Uh, this spacer goes through here. Like so. On the outside, there's another spacer. All this goes, tire assembly goes in here. Another spacer. And then our nut. That holds that all nice and tight. Um, moves back and forth. Where we have plenty of adjustment down at the bottom. We're pretty close here. It looks like it fits really well. Let's get our wheel on. Come on, baby. There we go. Fits on the spacer inside. Through goes our axle. It locates over here. Problem is, so there's a shoulder on the inside of the axle right here. Um, that fits on that spacer, and this frame is just a little bit too narrow, about a quarter inch too narrow, so. Well, I'm going to have to turn this, um, either turn it or bore out that center um, piece. So, but there we go. All right. And then we have, there's a lock key. That lock goes on that nut, and that nut goes on there, locks everything down, all right? So there we go. All right, we got our uh, juice drum on here, got our star hub. Looks like it's fairly centered. Um, might need to take a hair off this spacer just to get it over just a bit. But it's pretty damn close. Uh, looks like it needs to go left maybe a little bit. So we'll uh, we'll address that. But might have to offset these spokes to pull the, the, the rim over one way. Because I have heard of people having to do that. But there we go. Star Hub. Looks pretty awesome. There's Star Hub, Juice Drum. The whole deal. So, and then we have our other spacer that came with the kit. It goes in here. As you see, it is just a little bit too long. So, that will be where our difference is with making up with these legs. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty close. So, that shows you how much room the stock or the, the factory one is. So... That fits right in there. Meat butts up right to that. <clears throat> so, but yeah. Uh, so next is to fully weld the frame. Um, once we fully weld it, we'll figure out our spacer situation. I wanted to get this on the back mounted and done before we went um, and welded everything. That's in case stuff moved. And I don't want to make this spacer just quite yet. Again, just in case things move. So next thing is weld it up. And then hopefully we can get our tires on. Because uh, our tires did come in. We'll put our tires on, put our front end back on. And have us a roller and see what this thing will actually look like on the ground. So we'll get more of that hopefully tomorrow or this weekend. And we'll get her down the ground. So stay tuned. Alright, so last night I did, got quite a bit of work done, um, and progress made. Got the hardtail all welded on, it is all finished welded. Got the welds ground down down here. I uh, got one more spot in here I gotta get to, um, that I couldn't get with the grinder. So that's all done. Got our early juice drum on, it is all mounted. So these spring plates, I'd take um, about an eighth of an inch out, roughly. 
um, did a center line, scribed it with my calipers, and then took a burr and filed and did a file finish on it. So that's all done. We do still have to build a spacer over here. Um, I have a spacer that came with the kit, but it's a little long because it's made for the stock um, rear axle. So once we figure out where our um, where all that's going to live, then we'll make our final spacer. So <clears throat> one thing with this drum is you can't really move it over um, because the way it's set up. So it has a spacer in here. It has the stay down here, all that stuff, and it is really close to the frame. So our chain should clear. We're not going to know until we get a transmission, though. Uh, that is the one major component that I need. I'm on the search for, and quite frankly, their prices are all over the place. So um, the ones that are 1,200 bucks or whatever sell for sell really as soon as they get put up. Um, then you have people who don't want to ship shit, which Whatever, it is what it is. So, um, yeah, anybody have a ratchet top out there with a long shaft for a shovel, please let me know. Uh, I am on the hunt for one. I'm not, I'm not paying 1800 bucks. So, uh, if you have a reasonably priced one, let me know. I will gladly buy it from you. So, that is one major component we need in order to get a full mock up. Uh, anyway. Uh, this is the fender we're going to try and use. It's a front fender, as you see here with the fork reliefs. Um, pay 40 bucks, like I said before, but it has this nice detail that I like, um, which is the one on the one we were going to buy and run. So we're going to try and modify this and get it to run. Um, another one I pulled out is sporty front fender, uh, super narrow. It is the exact same width as the tire, and it actually hugs it really well, but it is not long enough. So I could get another one and extend it, and the front, front wheel on the Sporty, I believe, is a 19, and that is an 18 tire, so it actually fits the curve really well, but it might be a bit too narrow. Um, Got to play with it, see what we come up with. Got your 39 millimeter front end on. This is Sporty model, so I still need to get the internal cups. Uh, with or the cuffs with the internal stop on them, got to get that, and then um, up here we either need to trim this ear, which I don't know what it's for. It doesn't seem appear to be any threads or anything in there um, because it hits here. So we either trim the top tree or we trim this off. Probably end up trimming this off just to make it cleaner. Um, still trying to decide if we're going to window the neck or not. I know a lot of people do. Um, still undecided on that one. But we did get our StarHub front wheel, 21 inch front wheel, mounted up and on. So the axle I had to turn down on the lathe because it is 5 8 inch bearings and the Sporty is a 3 quarter. So I had to turn a little bit off that. Got it all mounted. Um, still got to do a spacer for this side. And I still need to turn down a little bit over here. But it is all mounted up pretty well. Uh, for the most part, the wheel is centered, so that's good. Um, so this is probably where it's going to ride. Um, yeah. Uh, the other part of this is our front brake, which I talked about earlier. So we got to figure that out. Uh, biggest thing is I got to get a uh, brake caliper for here. I do have the pm1 off the back of that and then we have the front one so i might rob those uh, one of those to see if they will work um the only thing is i have a 10 inch rotor for up here so i think we're going to try to run a small rotor so it's not so big and see if we can't make a mount and make it work um we got to build a spacer all kinds of adapters and whatnot for in here in order to get that to work so um, that one's going to take a lot of work in order to figure that out so or it might not take a lot of work at all but we'll see so it's kind of where we're at we are in full roller so that is good now comes all the big um essentially fabrication stuff 
forward controls, you know, all the mechanisms for that to get everything to work. All the other stuff. We do have our split tanks that we had for the other shovel, which this frame does have all the mounts. So probably going to mock those up here today, see what they look like. And uh, I do have another um, setup that I want to look at doing for, for this middle and whatnot. But we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, we do still have that two into one that I had built for the other shovel. It actually fit, uh, fits the lines of that rear hardtail pretty well. So, a lot to do. Um, Got to get some bars and stuff. So, I need to go visit our buddy Josh, see what kind of handlebar stash he has out there. Get something kind of low or tall. I don't know yet. Um, but something with kind of with a pretty good pullback. But yeah, so that's where we're at. We are in full roller and uh, hopefully we'll be making quite a bit more progress here to come. So, Stay tuned. Thanks for watching.